It's been a vibrant month in the world of filmmaking tech with Sony, DJI, ARRI, Small HD, Rode, Tilter, Adobe, and many others with new releases which have broken headlines. There's a real bounty of developments for us to dive into. So let's get into it. Let's kick things off with a tantalizing future sneak and peek. This month, Sony dropped a teaser of their new firmware announcements for their FX6, 3 and 30 cameras. Now, before we go get too excited about these firmware updates, they're not going to be available for some time. So we're going to have to just exercise some patience, but the wait will be worth it as the FX6 is finally getting some essential features like waveforms, false color, 1.5 times anamorphic de-squeeze, focus breathing compensation with specific lenses, with a new 709 Toad and preset, shutter angle, and better live stream capabilities, which will also trickle down to the FX3 and 30 camera models. Sure, these might not be groundbreaking feature additions, and some may argue that these features should have been deployed with the cameras at launch. But these are all welcome additions and they should breathe new life into these cameras. The FX6 version 5 firmware should drop around May with the FX3 and FX30 firmware being expected to be available sometime around September 2024. Continuing with Sony for a little bit. If you have pre-ordered a Sony Barano, Sony has released a great set of setup videos featuring Alistair Chapman. These videos cover scan modes, codecs and camera configuration guides and the links to these videos will be in the description below. Now, we also have some exciting news this month if you're a Blackmagic camera modder out there. In late December, the Pod Mod Kit was successfully crowdfunded on Kickstarter and is now, being January 2024, in the production phase. The final assembly will take place in New Zealand and it appears that the Pod people out there could be expecting the arrival of their Pod Mod Kits by late February 2024. So stay tuned for future updates and developments. Hasselblad has announced the 907X and the CFV100C, a powerful fusion of modular design and cutting edge technology offering three distinct photographic capabilities. Despite lacking video support, this camera boasts an upgraded 100 megapixel back illuminated sensor doubling the resolution of its previous models. This system can even breathe new life into older Hasselblad V system cameras, such as the 500 and 200 series, as it enables film camera users to achieve digital age picture quality while enjoying the unique experience of waist level shooting. There's a lot to love about these stylish medium format powerhouses. They are technically impressive with 16-bit color, high resolution touchscreens, one terabyte of inbuilt storage, phase detection autofocus with face detection, classic design and premium build quality. Additional features include the ability to link with an iPad or iPhone via the built-in Wi-Fi for image transmission and editing using Focus Mobile 2. But notably, the camera really does lack a HDMI output and limits the camera to stills photography only. The Hasselblad 907X and the CFV100C are available now for around $8,000. DJI has unveiled their new DJI Mic version 2, which is now capable of recording 32-bit audio in the TX units. For DJI wireless mic users, 32-bit float recording is a pretty major update, as is the addition of Bluetooth pairing with other devices like smartphones. These two features alone make the new DJI mic to a worthwhile upgrade, as does the new noise cancelling technology, control dial and OLED touchscreen GUI. Combined, these features should provide better audio recordings with a simpler user experience. The form factor and design has seen minor changes. Most notable is the larger battery travel case and the semi-reduced DJI branding. Unit run record times have also seen an upgrade, but the lack of a user replaceable battery is still an issue. And how you use and care for your DJI Mic 2 will affect the lifespan of the product. So you have to be aware of this buying into the system, which is now priced at $100 more than its predecessor. In other DJI news, DJI have teamed up with Bid Yangwang. Sorry if I've said that wrong. Now, if you haven't heard of this company before, you wouldn't be the first. That's because it's an electric car manufacturer from China. So together, Bid and DJI have created the world's first vehicle integrated unmanned aircraft system. And they have achieved this by adding a drone bay to the top of an electric vehicle. This innovation features an intelligent storage system, automatic battery swapping, charging management, and one click takeoff and landing. Like most DJI drones, the camera system supports high definition, high frame rate, and low latency image transmissions, providing owners an aerial view to enhance their travel experience. Who knows whether this is a marketing stunt or if it's something that's actually going to come to market. Regardless, I find it truly interesting. 
Tilter has improved their camera cage for the new Blackmagic full frame 6K cinema camera. They fixed the mounting point alignment, added more mounting points, and made it easier to customize for different setups. You can transform the full cage into a half cage by removing the right side arm module. This is useful for lighter builds, especially when using a gimbal. The full cage has multiple quarter 20 threads, cold shoe receivers, an ARRI compatible rosette, and a NATO rail for NATO rail side handles and accessories. With the half cage, you can extend the bottom plate to support the Blackmagic design battery grip. As with all tilter cages, you can buy it as a standalone cage, or you can choose from basic and advanced kits. The prices range from 89 to 359 US dollars. Tilter also announced their Zombie Rig Boom Pole Support System, a universal support solution for boom operators. Co-developed for improved weight distribution and flexibility during audio recording adjustments, the Zombie Rig acts like a steady cam for sound. Unlike alternatives, it doesn't require arms above your head, allowing strain-free boom operation in both height and direction adjustments. Compatible with various boom pole models, the system's design includes an operating bracket, support pole for balancing and maneuvering the boom vertically and rotating it 360 degrees. This frees the operator's hands, enabling audio mixing while operating the boom. Although not suitable for every sound scenario, it aids operators in extended boom holding situations. The modular design allows for efficient storage and the system is constructed from durable carbon fiber. It's available now for pre-order at 719 US dollars with a 10% reduction until February 6, 2024. Then it will be priced at 799 US dollars and it ships within four weeks. Tilter has also announced news that it has introduced a significant upgrade to the Hydra Arm Mini with a modification kit, making it compatible with the DJI Ronin 2 gimbal body, expanding the system's payload capacity to between 8 and 13 kilos or 17.6 and 28.6 pounds when using a two-arm configuration. The kit includes several updated components like shortened support cables, heavy-duty shock absorbing head, a heavy-duty spring, and custom-designed Ronin 2 mount. These upgrades should prove beneficial for delivering smoother footage, especially at higher speeds. The ability to easily switch between the original and the upgraded components adds flexibility to the system's configuration and is a welcome upgrade to the current Hydra owners. Blazar has released a video tutorial demonstrating how to shim their very affordable Remus 1.5 anamorphic lenses without a projector. The videos explain how to download and print the Blazar back focus testing chart, then walks you through the calibration process. The tutorial does provide good guidance for end users who need to shim their lenses, but you need to remain aware that doing so could affect the performance of your lens. And if you are serious about your images, you should probably consider sending your lenses somewhere like Duclos lenses for peace of mind. Building on the success of the SRH 360, ARRI has introduced a new stabilizing remote head known as the 360 EVO. This advanced system allows for 360 degree rotation on both the roll and pan axis all centered around the optical center of the lens. This feature provides enhanced creative control for various applications, including films, dramas, TV commercials, and music videos. The 360 EVO boasts a more durable design and seamless remote systems integration. Its operation is facilitated by the same software platform GUI as the Trinity 2 remote touchscreen control panel. Additionally, the two products share cables, brackets, and sand plates for mounting different cameras. Both can be controlled using the same tools, such as ARRI's digital remote Wheels DWR1 and the new digital encoder head DEH-2. This interoperability means that Trinity 2 users can seamlessly invest in the 360 Evo without the need for additional accessories or the hassle of learning new workflows. Insta360 has announced a collaboration with three times Olympic gold medalist Sean White. The kit looks pretty impressive and here's what White has to say about it. Hi everyone, Sean White here, three-time Olympic gold medalist in half-pipe snowboarding. I'm proud to announce that I've worked with Insta360 to create the Sean White Snow Kit. It has classic accessories like the chest strap and some cool new ones like the action invisible selfie stick. You're getting this entire sort of panoramic circumference of what's going on around you and you can pick and choose the angles that you want. I think that's half the fun, I would say, at least. Half the fun is, is, is getting the content, and then the other half is like going back and editing, going through it, and, and actually seeing what this camera can do. John White here to capture your best shots this winter season with Insta360.
Joby is trying to get people to dive into the world of underwater content creation with its Sea Power waterproof case, compatible with iPhone 15, 14, 13, and 12, excluding the mini, and Samsung Galaxy S23 and 22. This fully waterproof housing lets creators unleash the full potential of their smartphone's video recording capabilities in depths up to 33 feet, which is around 10 meters, while retaining full touchscreen functionality. You can buy additional accessories like domes and pistol grips, and it's priced around $239 and is available now. Small HD has just launched an upgrade to their Ultra 7 monitor, an enhanced version of the popular 703 Ultra Bright, offering improved processing power, features, build quality, and accessories at a whopping $2,999 US dollars. But these are designed for professionals and are amongst the best camera monitors on the market. They are super color accurate, they are good size at seven inches, and they're sealed against water and dust, setting them completely apart from the Ultra 5 counterpart. These monitors come with all the connectivity and power options that you may need, and lots of other onboard monitoring tools, including Ed Lockman's EL Zone. Buying into this system is a large investment. However, this monitor is designed for heavy usage, offering durability and superior performance, and maintains Small HD's commitment to product quality. Eldercron has introduced the Tripod X, the world's first fully motorized tripod, and it is now available for orders. This innovative tripod can easily raise and lower heavy camera setups just with the touch of a button. Weighing nine kilos, the self-leveling Tripod X has a height range from 34 to 148 centimeters, can be controlled by a push button or app, and supports payloads of up to 20 kilos. It's nice to see Eldercron being transparent in the marketing, stating that the Tripod X isn't completely silent. It produces around 64 dB of noise at its maximum speed, and that it isn't suited for wet or sandy environments, making it ideal for studio use only. It's also powered by a 12 volt, three amp power tool battery, Fully charged, the Tripod X can handle around 300 adjustments and offers weeks worth of standby time. It's compatible with any 3.8 mount tripod head, but for those with other Edelcon products like the Head 1 or Head Plus, combining them allows for ultra precise camera movements and time lapses. The Tripod X is priced around $2,600 US dollars and shipping is expected to commence in a couple of weeks. Adobe has introduced major new updates in Premiere Pro. This latest beta release was designed to introduce an intuitive new audio workflow that makes it faster and easier to edit and sound mix directly in Premiere Pro. The big improvements are coming in the form of interactive fade handles, allowing you to create a variety of custom audio fades with more precise control. AI powered audio category tagging for dialogue, sound effects, music, or ambience, which provide relevant single click tools like loudness matching and auto ducking, redesigned FX clip badges, and modern intelligence waveforms and clips that dynamically resize. The beta is available now for download and the link will be in the description. iFootage has released their Anglerfish COB 40 degree light projector. It's a fully focusable 40 degree fixed projection lens for Bowens mount COB lights up to 600 watts. It has precise shutter control for clean cuts and projections. It comes with 16 rotatable gobo options, color gels, and the spotlight itself has inbuilt geometric shape light effects integrated into the projector and an RS ring, which will be an accessory that's coming soon. The design features a heat dissipation shield to prevent excessive temperatures and potential burns to users while operating more powerful lights. Compared to my current projectors, one from Godox that's very front heavy and the other from Aperture with its double mounting system, this just seems like a better, more thought out product and it is definitely something that I will buy. So if you'd like to see a detailed comparison between those three products, don't forget to subscribe. Atomos has reappointed flamboyant ex-CEO Jeremy Young as their new CEO. Hopefully this will help the struggling tech company as in 2023, Atomos Limited reported a net loss of $61 million, which was more than $50 million higher than the previous year. And they have removed products from their lineup like the Atomos Neon high-end monitors. But the really big news when it comes to cinema cameras has been this huge announcement that came from Red Digital Cinema with the release of their V-Raptor VVX and XLX cameras. Both both of which are upgrades to the existing models with several enhancements, but here's the key features. Both versions of the new V-Raptor ship with 17 plus stops of dynamic range and global shutters. They retain the same lightweight and compact form factors, continue to use the same CF Express Type B media from Angelbird. Depending on the version you buy, come with RF, EF and PL lens mounts, Global Vision extended highlight recovery, Phantom Track or Ghost Frame remapping, can record 8K 120 frames at 800 megabytes per second. Both have a right side assistance user interface. They record the same red code raw HQ, MQ and LQ and all flavors of ProRes and have all the connectivity you will need for production inbuilt in the camera body. 
And while both cameras maintain the same capabilities as their predecessors, the V-Raptor XL X offers additional features like two to seven stops of internal ND filters, a dedicated lens mount system, wireless gen lock, and more video outputs. But the biggest changes to these cameras is by far the global shutter, the introduction of the global vision suite, and the extended highlights mode, which promises over three stops of additional dynamic range, providing clearer details in extreme highlights. But when activated, the extended highlights mode will halve your available frame rates, cap your ISO at 1600, double your data, and if there is excessive movement, may cause image ghosting in the reconstructed highlight area, and as such is not recommended for use with LED volumes. However, this is a non-destructive capture medium and can be disabled in post. The V-Raptor XL is priced at $44,995 US dollars, which is a $5,495 increase from the non-global shuttered version. The V-Raptor 8K VVX is available at $29,995 US dollars, with the non-global shutter version at $24,995 US dollars. RED also introduced new accessories, including the RED Compact EVF Pack and some new battery adapters. The EVF Pack is priced at just under $5,000 US dollars. While these prices may sound steep, they are still a lot cheaper than other high-end cameras from Sony and Arri. And RED has also brought back its upgrade program for current V-Raptor and V-Raptor XL owners to move into the X system, and that pathway is $12,500. US I'll have more on these cameras, and as more information is released, they're all still pretty new. If you are interested in that, just don't forget to subscribe because that video will be coming out soon. And with that, I'll see you at the end of February with the next monthly gear wrap-up episode. Bye for now. Swipe up. Tag your friends. Like and subscribe, comment below If I make this follow, don't let this flop, wait till the end